Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today finally I have something exciting for you. So this is my Blackmagic 4K Ursa, finally with a battery so it's no longer chained to the wall outlet. This is the uh, broadcast lens I was talking last time. So basically, since the last time you saw this lens, I had to do some modifications on it. So in this case, basically this is a really old JVC zoom, uh, zoom control. I could not find any adapter or anything about it in regards to the pinout. So basically I opened it up, I connected the 12 volt, 12 volt adapter to it directly to test it out. It works perfectly. Right now, actually I just received today the sockets, which I plan to replace. So what I'm going to do next with the zoom control, because basically, as I said, this is not a standard uh, zoom control cable, nor the other functionalities uh, won't be won't be in use like uh, communication with the camera. But I will be able to use the zoom function and also from even uh, zoom demand later on. So what I plan to do is basically just to install this uh, <coughs> standard 12 volt uh, connector here in instead of this cable. And on the other side I will place the DTAP uh, cable, which will end up with this socket. Uh, also, what I did with this lens, uh, not just talking about the zoom control. When I received this lens, it was uh, full of uh, fungus. So I had to open up the entire lens, uh, clean it up internally. So all of the glass elements, except one which was glued together, I was unable to clean. So it is almost perfect. Not perfect, but almost. Um, what I plan to do now is basically take the camera outside um, the way I'm going to use it. So again, I bought this uh, B42 EOS adapter. It was I think like 30 euros or so. So I will use this to mount the, the lens, well, to adapt the lens to the EF mount, which is on my Ursa. So it's going to go like this, click in, B4 mount, straight in. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. I always miss it. It's, it's actually quite hard to, to find a good position, but okay, that's it. Uh, this is the entire setup. One more thing which I will be using, I noticed that, uh, first of all, this lens is not meant to be used with uh, sensors like this. This is a CCD uh, camera lens. So basically it's supposed to use a prism, so I'm not expecting to have a really good result with this lens. Again, super old lens, uh, not designed for this kind of camera, not nearly designed for the resolution. Uh, only thing I tested until now is basically the sensor coverage. So for now, uh, I noticed that I can only use it, well, I could use it, but the thing won't work. Uh, I'm going to use it in a windowed mode, so the sensor uh, of the Ursa won't be used the entire size of the sensor, but cropped uh, size just to cover the, most of the sensor. Even that won't cover the entire sensor, but I think we can still make a usable uh, video in regards to the coverage. So I'm going to take all of this outside. Uh, I'm going to do, be doing some testing and um, yeah, basically that's it. The only thing which I want to mention uh, regarding the cleaning of the lens, um, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's quite tedious. It took me, I think like six, seven hours to do it. Um, I, I would not recommend just to do it yourself, but if you have any kind of, let's say, technical, uh, or, or if you're a handyman, I think you can do it, or handy girl, I'm not sure if that's the right term. Um, yeah, this had a lot of elements inside. The cleaning agent I used is a combination of um, uh, 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 hydroxide, 3%, and uh, regular rubbing alcohol, 96%. So basically I used the, 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 the hydrogen peroxide for uh, removal of the fungus and after that alcohol just to clean the lens to, to well, as perfect a, a, as I could get. Uh, if you're interested in of making a video like that, please let me know. But for now, let's finally go and test this lens outside. ready let's start it up and see what we did here so first thing I'm going to do is going to be adjusting the ND filter and the ISO settings on the camera 
Also wanted to mention this small modification I made. Basically this is just a power adapter from 220 to 12 volts. This is just for testing, so at the moment I won't be able to use the zoom features of the lens, the automatic ones at least. So let's adjust these settings first and then see what we can get out of it. So first menu, ISO to 400, which is a native ISO. Okay, and now we will just adjust this and also we need to change the sensor size to window and ProRes 444 I'm going to be using. Now we are in a beautiful uh, suburbs of Tilburg. So we are going to be testing this lens. As I mentioned before, now it's been completely thoroughly cleaned. From the inside, uh, all of the glass elements except one are cleaned. There is still one element where, I, unfortunately, it's not possible to clean because basically it's two ele glass elements uh, which are uh, glued together. So let's try to zoom in. I did most of the, the back focus and fo front focus adjustments already. So this is on the far side. Let's try to focus it a bit more. Yeah, I think from the for the far focus, this is the best I'm going to get. Let's try to do a bit more better. No, unfortunately, I think that's it. Let's try to zoom it back a bit. As you can see, the par focal is working quite nicely. Let's actually to go something which is more brighter, like a cloud. Let's try to focus on that one. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's zoom out a bit first. Find him. Okay. Two. This is why I really like to use the variable NDs. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit more. Something like that. Let's now see what we can do with focus. Again, I think this is the best that we are going to get. Let's stabilize the camera fully so this is on a maximum zoom. Try to see again the focus. Yeah, I think that's the best we can get. Let's zoom out a bit. Going to go somewhere a bit more greener. Let's go here, for example. Yeah, let's point it directly to the sun. Yeah, black spot. This is the Ursa's usual problem with the black sun. Something which I think was never corrected. Even in the winter resolve, I know in some time there was a black sun adjustment. So let's open it up a bit back, like this, lovely. So let's focus in on this, this is much closer than we were before. As you can see the focus is actually quite nice. This lens is not the sharpest one you will ever find because first of all it's meant for a much different kind of, well, for a CCD sensor. I'm using now Super 35 sensor on Ursa 4K. Let's move it up a bit. Something like this. Let's focus in on the back. This is, I think, more than a 1.2, 1.3 kilometers away from me. I'm not sure if I did the best job with focus here. Let's try to do. Okay, this is the best job I can do with focus. Let's try to follow a vehicle speeding on the highway there. Actually, with this uh, uh, Sirui uh, tripod, it's amazingly easy to do that. Let's try to focus on that building over there. Okay, we're going to close the ND filter a bit more. Nah, unfortunately, I just have a <laughs> piece of wood in front of me, as you can see here. So, is it usable? The This uh, B4 lens, uh, which is, as again, super old for a modern camera, yes, I think absolutely it is. Let's try to do again this one. Let's change our focus a bit to see how it performs. Here, and let's go farther away. The focus breathing is... N I, don't, I can't notice it from here, maybe when we put it on the... In the editing software, maybe it will be easier to see because it's quite bright outside. This is why I really like my 10-inch Ursa display here. Let's try to see if we can zoom in more. No, this is the maximum zoom. Let's 
all in all I think I had a huge improvement with uh, this lens just by cleaning it and removing the fungus uh, I think it's still usable I'm not sure if I'm going to be cropping this in post because I, I do see a bit on the right side the edge of the lens because again this was not meant to be used with this kind of sensor this is really really old lens but yeah I think even with a really far zoom you can still read from the, the trucks I think it's quite usable so that was the, the testing for this lens uh, I tried to do it with two cameras one just on me and second one with uh, what the, the lens sees but unfortunately that's not gonna happen because at the moment I don't have a second cameraman <laughs> but all in all I really like the image which uh, this lens provides as I said it, it's not the sharpest lens uh, nor would I like it to be honestly I think it gets the job quite nicely done since also it was for free uh, honestly now I'm thinking more and more to get more V4 lenses like this maybe a bit newer ones which can at least cover the entire sensor area of uh, Super 35 but uh, yeah that's it uh, let's get back to inside Now when we are back, uh, I think I showed as much as I could about this lens. Uh, if you like this video and you would like to see more like it, please do comment. Uh, if you think this video helped you in any way, sort of form, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. And that's it for today and until next time, thank you so much for watching.